This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, Kent did a lot of stuff apparently by his links. Um, Amos um, did something with water. I don't. I don't know. Oh, it's it's kind of a wash. Um, hopefully, we're friends though. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 282 for Sunday, the 18th of April, 2021. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. No guests this week. I'm Amos, that's Kent, uh, and welcome to our guest, no guest. Uh, oh, wait, that we... I had something going there and I, I just don't know. I don't know where it was going, which is kind of like a thesis for the show. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good. I mean, I, I got a paper cut earlier today um other than that i'm good have you ever gotten a paper cut from cardboard that's where this one came from those are the fucking worst it yes it is and you can even see from oh the jesus video, there's like a flap there's, there's like yes, a flap there's a skin flap and i haven't ripped it off yet because it's protecting the 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 bloodiness that was trying to come through oh and my god it's so, yeah. I'm gonna take care of that post show. So but, uh. so here here's the, here's the thing with paper cuts, man. You get a paper cut like on a normal sheet of paper, and it just slices a nice clean slice. You get a paper cut with like cardboard, especially if it's like rough hewn cardboard, like Amazon boxes and shit. Yep. Like it rips the skin. It leaves fibers inside. It's guaranteed to fucking get infected. And in no mm. circumstance at all is it not gonna be paper uh, uh, painful. Oh yeah, it was it was quite painful, and it was the it was the the slow process too of of how long is it going to take before blood appears? Yeah, because that's always a variable. It could be immediately, or it could be like it could take up to a couple of minutes yep. for blood to appear. This yeah. one was probably right about a minute before like blood actually started. It didn't it didn't pool like I didn't yeah. have an actual drop of blood. Yeah, but it very slowly started turning red under the surface of this flap, <sighs> and then just kind of. Like just occupied that space. It was, it, it, it looks like it, it missed it missed the money shot by about uh, a quarter inch right there. Like it's just yeah, just it, shy it of the right seam in your in the, of the <laughs> knuckle of the thumb. Yeah. Yeah. God. Oh man. Paper cuts are the <laughs> fucking like like of all the things like that's. Oh my god! So bad. Weave in the chat says he got a paper cut two weeks ago from aluminum foil. Yeah. Those. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a paper cut at that point, but it's oh yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's oh, bad, dude. Like I've got, I've done it with aluminum foil, and it 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 doesn't. I, I would say it matters, but it probably doesn't even matter if it's like the uh, the smooth edge that the factory cuts or the edge that you cut, because either way, <laughs> it's going to go like as deep as it just wants to. Yes. Yeah. 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 Ugh. freaking awful. We're so, we're so fragile. As humans, yeah, these meat suits suck. <laughs> yes, <laughs> God, I, I petition for for new meat suits. New let's, meat let's suits. Trade these things in. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've said for a long time that your meat suit comes with a twenty five year warranty, and on your twenty fifth for twenty fifth birthday, you start falling apart. Like that's just it's just over. That's yeah, that's kind of true. <laughs> yeah. Um, some a little sooner than that, some a little later, but I'd say twenty five is a good MTFB for the meat suit. <laughs> yes yes uh, oh geez. yeah hey dude uh i uh, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into mine because it's i was telling you uh before sh you know yesterday i think it was or the day before uh yesterday during the the head pre-show mm -hmm. i didn't have shit to talk about for two weeks and then thursday happened yes thursday thursday Okay. What what happened Thursday? Did, you, did um you, you you know we have a a pond in did, our backyard did, every spring, did, right? Super geek. Or... No, no, no. You you know we have a pond in our backyard pond, every right. every yeah, yeah. every because spring. The, the, the runoff and everything. It, like a runoff. Yeah, yeah. They they snow melt. Let me tell you what usually happens. Usually we get a little bit of snow in the last couple of days, and then we get some wind, and the wind comes through. It's like the the front comes through, and <clears throat> and uh, we get a bunch of snow. We get a, maybe a foot of snow. And then a couple of days later, the tail will come through like a secondary front and it'll just blow all the snow away. We get like 30 to 60 mile an hour winds, just blows all the snow away. Oh, 
So we never really have to put up a lot of lot of snow at a, at a time. We probably get you know four or five feet a year, but it it never sticks around very long. This year we haven't had a windstorm since like December. We had an above average, as far as my knowledge of February here, we had above average February of snow. Well, okay. when it doesn't get blown away, we just had two feet, three feet, four feet of snow on the ground. Oh my god, dude. And of course, it started getting warm because it's March and turning into April, and the, the snow started to melt. And there's a lot more snow than usual, so it started dumping, you know, just just pooling water. And everybody's uh, easements, the little ditch in front of their in front of their house, mm. all of it was full. Like we had, it was cresting over the roads in places that it was usually dry. You know, it, it was just awful. Our backyard, however, it has been. There's more water out there than has ever been out there. Well, it eventually got to the house. Like it, it, it creeped to the house, to the foundation. And at that point, I was like, I'm done with this. I went to Home Depot. I rented a, what they call a trash pump. It's basically it, it up to an, an, up to things an inch big. It didn't care. You know, if it, if oh, like so this is like a, this is a sump pump, but it, but it allows for like solid. Yes. Solid and it's not just like a well. normal, like electric. This is like a gas powered, no shit. 250 gallons per minute pump it's a fucking two and a half inch or some shit fire hose at the end end of it that's just spraying fucking water i went out there and did that now we, we got it on a four hour rental which was 50 bucks not bad uh but we got it at the end of the night so we got to keep it until morning you know because we can't turn it in at like 11 o'clock and right. closed right. so i went out there and started pumping it up and my idea was i'll let it go through a couple of tanks of gas and then about you know midnight one o'clock whenever the tank runs out around that time frame i'll fill it up and i'll go to bed and then whatever happens happens i had to get up in the morning early anyway and i would just take it pack it up send it you know maybe this was wednesday i think it was wednesday night because thursday was the game but i had to go uh do a, a video for david soccer game on thursday so this was wednesday night and i was gonna wrap it up take it to home depot drop it off and head into town for the soccer game. Okay. Last tank is going. It's been a couple hours. We've drained, you know, 30, 40,000 gallons, like nah, not even kidding, 30, 40,000 gallons out of our backyard into the drainage disc behind our house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, some people are like, why don't you just build a channel of the water drain? Because the drainage ditch is actually higher than my yard. So it, I'm actually pumping it uphill to let it go downhill on the other side. Anyway. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I go out there and I fill the tank, fill it, fill up the gas, adjust the the intake nozzle, you know, adjust the outtake or the output nozzle, all that stuff, and get it going. And what happens? I'm closing up the house. I'm locking up. Make sure all the doors locked. Let the dog out. All that kind of stuff. I come downstairs. Turn my computer off, and I hear trickling water. Oh no! Oh no! Turn the lights on, look around the living room. Our living room's in our basement. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And look around the living room, and there's water dripping from one of the lights in the ceiling. I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm not a genius, but that's not supposed to fucking happen. So I go up the stairs yeah. to uh, directly above it, and there's a bathroom. That bathroom is dry, but there's a little bit of drippage coming from above that. Oh. So I go up to the oh, third no. floor where the bedrooms are, and the bathroom, the hallway bathroom up there, the toilet is running. Well, somehow, my wife is up there remodeling that bathroom. That's like her been her project this week. She wanted to remodel it. She's been wanting to remodel it for a while. She's like, fuck it. I got a week off as I out process, stuff like that. I'm going to go ahead and get it done. Sometime during the remodeling, the tank on the toilet got nudged and caused it to start flowing. And then a seal broke, blah, 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 blah. I don't know how much water went down through the walls to get to the basement, but it was enough to freak me the fuck out. And we're going to have to replace some drywall and all kinds of other shit. Like we got to do some massive repairs. Um, mm -hmm. So instead of going to bed, I basically, Oh, and the water because it was pulling on the bathroom floor actually soaked into the carpet, into the hallway, into my daughter's room, into the loft. Like there's a circle around that bathroom. All the, all the carpet around that bathroom got soaked. Mm -hmm. So I spent the night, instead of going to bed and getting like a four-hour nap and then going off to this game in the morning, I stayed up all night uh, sucking up water out of carpet 
and mm. uh, trying to make sure that uh, there weren't any more drywall repairs than necessary. Yeah. Oh boy. So yeah, so, so again, I, gravity I, I is no one's friend. Water removal. Gravity yeah. is no one's friend because if it weren't for so, gravity, the water wouldn't have gone down two fucking floors in my house. <laughs> dude, yeah, like like I what was it? About a month or so ago, I had the issue with um, you know, needing water removal and yeah. um you just had to top me. Like you I, I, I just had to deal with one story place and you're like, "You know, you know what?" That cool story, bro. Check this shit out. Hold my beer. I, I'm uh, I'm gonna go three stories, and a fucking lake. <laughs> Good lord, man! Like water is water is 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 damaging. Like what 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 good is water, man? Like can we just get rid of water? Well, like, if we uh, if we weren't bathing anymore, we wouldn't have to worry about this. Can we just like take dust baths? Come on, yeah. it works for elephants. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dust baths. And then, like, for, for drinking, we just drink beer. Yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, that's what they did in, like, the Middle Ages. Like, water wasn't safe to drink because it was full of, like, black death and stuff like that. So they just brewed beer. And, and yeah. it was safe. So I, I say we do the same thing. Hell, yeah. we could even bathe in beer. That's fine. Uh, uh, that's uh, no, uh, no negative side to that, ba- I'm sure. Bad Weave says we should have sonic showers. Hey, I'm I mean, that. that sounds good until I start getting a little weird tingling in my nuts as I'm trying to clean out the Fumunda. Then I mean, I'm going to have to, you know, I'll have to call it there. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that could be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> no kink shaming here. Hey, man. So <laughs> so what's going on with you for the last couple weeks, dude? Dude. All right. So we didn't do a show last week because it was WrestleMania. And that is one of those presets in our calendar. Well, <laughs> Funnily, it didn't make it into the calendar, um, but yeah. it is a it is an annual thing. Um, Sunday, it, it's like Super Bowl Sunday in my yep. house. Like WrestleMania has been a decades long tradition in my house. We watch WrestleMania, and um, so we did uh, this year. Well, starting last year, uh, I don't know if it's going to be a permanent thing moving forward, or if it's more just like a, a, a COVID uh, thing. Uh, but they they do two days, so Saturday and Sunday. Um, it was fun. It was a good show. It was, you know, um, but we, so every year we do a, uh, like a pick sheet. I create a Google, well, at least the last couple of years, the way I've done it is I create a Google, uh, what, what do you call it? Where, where, um, you can make like a quiz or a poll or something. I, I forget what it's called. It's not sheets. Um, well, whatever it is. Uh, so I put form. It there. It's a form Google forms. Google Forms. There we go. So uh, I've been doing it on there the last few years, and I decided this year I'm going to put it out to the community. And I actually ho- only had one taker. Uh, it was Iaz in our Discord um, decided to participate, and wouldn't you know it, he won <laughs> the competition. Um, he he beat me by one um, out of fourteen matches. He got seven of them correct. I got six. Uh, then the rest of the family was right behind us. Uh, so it was a real close thing. But of course, first year I put it out there, uh, we yeah. lose. <laughs> we lost to the newcomer. I, I as Aktar, uh, longtime wrestling fan, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Used yeah. to talk about I on the 404 I mean, all the time. Yeah. And most, most members of our community should know who I as is. Yeah. If not, uh, go check him out. He's <laughs> everywhere um, at I as, I believe. I Y A Z. If you don't know who I as is, do you even see that? Like. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Hello. Um, no, so um, I've been on this Marvel kick uh, yeah. lately. I've been doing a rewatch of the MCU. Okay. Um, I am up to. Well, I mean, you've also had what was the uh, uh, One Division and yep. Uh, yep. the Falcon, the Winter Soldier, which you're about to talk about. But like, it, it's not yep. like this is just a, a random occurrence that you've kind of been doing an MCU tre- uh, thread, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. So, so, I mean, they're good movies. I enjoy the the series, but I really wanted to remind myself of all of the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, lesser plot points, like some of the things that happen in the background, some characters that I've forgotten about because the shows, like you said, uh, WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier bring back some of the earlier themes and storylines mm-hmm. and characters from, 
uh, from the previous movie. So I wanted to just kind of refresh myself. So I'm up to Civil War at this point. Um, okay. That's the next one I watch. Which is about halfway through, right? Maybe a little, uh, a little over halfway? Over, yeah. Probably, yeah, a little over halfway. Um, yeah, uh, so, so I, of the 22, you're sitting at like 14 or something like that. Uh, yeah, probably something like that. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to comment. So there was a couple couple of things. So I, I did want to comment on the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, you, I'm assuming, haven't watched this, Amos. No. <clears throat> right. So we have one episode left. This mm-hmm. was a short one. It was a six-episode series. The final one comes out uh, this coming Friday. Right. So looking forward to that. Um, but I just wanted to uh, just briefly discuss my opinions on the show. Um, so Cord Killers, <laughs> again, uh, most of our audience knows about Cord Killers. Um, and most of our long-term audience knows that I disagree almost completely with Brian Brushwood's opinions on TV shows and movies. On, on everything. Um, <laughs> and this is absolutely no exception. Brian Brushwood hates this show with his soul. And and the other the other folks on the show, so Tom and Bryce also dislike it. They're not having a great time watching it either. And it's such a downer to listen to to spoiler in time when they talk about this show because it's like, damn it, you guys! Like, no, your opinions are are objectively wrong. <laughs> uh, um, can't, no, that's I, that's I, that's not how opinions work. But okay, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I so all right. The, the the action of the show or just like the the uh, overarching plot of the you know the terrorist group and all that kind of stuff okay whatever if, if that's not your gig okay fine um, I think the the arc of the show really is about Sam Wilson becoming Captain America and and his journey to realizing that that's that's what he really should do okay and that's what I am getting from this show is is his journey. And the uh, the idea of how America would react to having a black Captain America. Mm. Uh, and they are, I believe, in my opinion, I think they are handling that uh, that situation very well. Um, I I'm really enjoying seeing the um, you know, just those themes like themes of racism in America are being presented. Um, it, it's not, like I said, it's not the A plot, right? Right. Um, it's not like all the time in your face, but it is the, the thread just under the surface through every episode. And I think that's kind of what they're building to. And if you watch, if you ever watch the show, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It, it, it's building to, um, how he is going to overcome, uh, that, um, you know, that perception of, of, you know, we don't want a black Captain America right. to become the next uh, Captain America. Like, I, uh, I'm not, I'm not doing it justice with what I'm saying, but it is like to me, it is phenomenal and it's very, very, very good. Did you watch Lovecraft Country? I didn't. Oh, damn it! That that show, I I can't talk about the Marvel aspect of it, but that show tackles the race issues. Like, it it dives in head first. Um, it's very very interesting to watch, and that that was my favorite part of watching that. Even though creatively it was pretty fucking good, um, but that aspect of it was just phenomenal. Uh, so yeah, I would recommend seeing that as well if you're if you're into the 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 dive into and in the perspective of of that aspect of 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 America. Um, okay. What about the new mutants, man? Like what's going on with that? Like I've, I've heard good things and I've heard <laughs> bad things. And this is the one with, uh, with, uh, Maisie Williams in it, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. So the new mutants, this, this movie is a long time in the making. I think they filmed it in like 2017 or something like that. Um, it's been pushed back, pushed back, pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. Um, like probably six times or something like that. Um, a lot of it, at least in the beginning, was mm-hmm. due to um, needing to do reshoots because the like test audiences fucking hated it. So they went back to the drawing board for certain <laughs> things um, and then mix in like COVID and, and uh, Disney buying Fox and all of that sort of stuff. Pushback after pushback after pushback. It was finally released. Uh, the official release date says 2020. 
Um, but it just now came on HBO Max like a week ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Lucas and I watched it last night. And um, while I appreciate what what I think, at least, that they were trying to do with the movie, um, it didn't really have a plot until like the last couple of minutes of the movie. Oh. Uh, I felt like... I felt like the movie was an introduction to the characters and not a whole lot of story. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I, I enjoyed the characters, like learning about the characters and Mm -hmm. like seeing, you know, as their powers are revealed because you don't know what any of their powers are in the beginning. They're, they're kind of like slowly revealed throughout the movie. Um, I, I, I liked the characters. Most of them anyway, I liked the characters. Um, but not a whole lot of story there. Yeah. Um, All garnish, no meal. It, yeah, I'm gonna like. I, officially, I think I would give it a thumbs in the middle. But if I had, if I was forced to just be binary, thumbs up, thumbs down, I would give it a thumbs down, dude. Yeah. Um, it wasn't it wasn't the greatest in my opinion. This was the uh, the thirteenth movie in the X Men franchise. It took me and Lucas a few minutes to figure out the math on how they got to thirteen, but it's no kidding. If you include the Deadpool movies. Mm. It is the thirteenth movie in that series. Gotcha. Uh, Bad Beast says is originally slated for April thirteenth, two thousand eighteen. So, yeah, yep. It's it's been a while coming. Yeah, uh, yeah. but crazy. Let, let's get to the crux of it though. Like, how is Maisie Williams? Um, she's like season three Game of Thrones, Maisie Williams. <laughs> um, she's young. She looks very young. Oh. Um, it's also got. Uh, no, I need I need more seasons seven and eight Maisie Williams in my life. Yeah, so it's also it, it it's got a lot of like up and coming actors that has since had things come out. Like it's got um, let's see what's her name uh, Anya Taylor Joy, who you might know from um, uh, oh crap, what was the uh, the Shyamalan movie? What was it called? Haven't um, seen it. Yeah, take it. Well, mo- most recently she was in uh, the Queen's Gambit, which was the huge hit on Netflix. Would she play in that? The main character. Oh shit! Yep. Oh, yep. I'm in then. I'm in. You get you give me some Maisie Williams in, in that chick because she that Queen's Gambit was fucking phenomenal. Yeah. So Glass was what I was trying to think of. She was the uh, like the main character in Glass. Okay. Um, well, the, like the the protagonist, right? In Glass. No, uh, did you watch Queen's Gambit? I haven't seen. God it. damn it, dude! Watched it. I, like it's on my it's on my watch list, but there's so much media these you're, days. You're you're rewatching shit, but you haven't watched like the two biggest fucking things that I've actually seen in the last three years. Come on, Queen's Gambit and Lovecraft Country. Fucking get on it. Bump that's those fair. up to, the, to on your list. Okay, and fair. they're both short. They're both like fucking six or eight episodes. Like. Fuck! Come on, dude. Yeah, the the other big, big uh, like up and coming young actor that that was in it was um, Jonathan Byers, who plays, uh, or I'm sorry, his character is Jonathan Byers in Stranger Things. Um, his name's Charlie Heaton. Um, he's the the yeah, lead he, in uh, in Stranger Things, right? He's the older brother. Oh, he's gotcha. The okay. Brother of, uh, the, okay. The kid. So in season one, the kid that disappears. It's his older brother. Yeah. Um, Squid says he hasn't watched Lovecraft Lovecraft Country or um, Queen's Gambit either, and I'm I'm telling him that with every ounce of whatever the fuck you have re- it left in your system, you need to watch those two shows because they are both fucking phenomenal for completely different reasons, but both phenomenal. Yeah. So uh, Queen's Gambit is a mini series, right? Like um, like five episodes or something like that. I think it wasn't very long. It was like maybe maybe six, uh, okay. and then, Love, and then Lovecraft Love... is ten or fewer. Okay, it's a, sta- okay. Right it's a Lovecraft was a standard HBO series, so eight to ten episodes. Okay, I'll prioritize. And they both go by very quickly. Like it, um, it is not. They are okay. not hard to watch. Like it's it's very easy viewing. As far as like time you know you don't you don't sit there thinking shit i got another 45 minutes of this episode like that never happens i watched yeah i watched the first six episodes of lovecraft in the fur in one night 
Oh wow! Like and okay. then and then realized, oh shit, I've only got two left, but it's too late. I need to go to bed. So then I got up the next day and watched the other two or four or whatever it was. Like it's yeah. it's easy watching. But feel like feel like playing a game. Uh, maybe let's see if the button works. What time is it? Huh. Kent, he's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Kent's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot contain myself. So I didn't create a game. Uh, we are going to go back to one of our old favorites. Uh, funny questions to ask where we're going to uh, roll a, a uh, an imaginary dice on Google's RNG. And um, we're going to take turns asking each other questions. Sounds um, good. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and start. I rolled a 13 originally, so I'm going to go to the 13th question on this list. Um, oh, oh, jumping right into internet controversies here. Yeah. Amos, how do you feel about putting pineapple on pizza? Fuck everybody. I love it. Hey, yeah. I, Dude, I, I, I'm okay with it. Like I, like the, the quote, Hawaiian pizza. Right. I'm, I'm okay with it. I just ordered one the other night and ate like three slices of that bitch. Like... Like literally Friday night, I ordered a Hawaiian pizza and ate the fuck out of it. Like I, I'm okay with it. It's good. It's delicious. Maybe not put it on there with some of the other toppings. Like I don't know if pineapple would work with pepperoni, but pineapple and, and some right. ham or bacon and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm fucking down, dude. It's, it's yeah. delicious. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Um, I, it's not my go-to, but if if there's a if there's a plate of it in front of me. I'm not going to turn it down. Yeah. Um, and there's something about like the, the mix of sweet and savory uh, yeah. that works for me. Um, yeah. But you know what? Whatever. If it's not your thing, it's not your thing. I don't like anchovies. So whatever. Like, I'm not going to be mad at you because right. you anchovies, you know? So whatever. Right. Um, All right. Uh, if life were a video game, this is number 38. If life were a video game, what would what would some of the cheat codes be? Oh. Wow, that's a weird one. Okay, yeah. so if life were a video game, what would a cheat code be? Um, hmm. How do I? Where do I want to go with this? Um, to me, okay. To me, one of my cheat codes for not losing things is always putting things in the exact same place every single time. Um, uh, for example, when I leave my house. Like you don't ever have to worry uh, or, or not even just my house. Like, like when we're together in Austin for South by or something like that and we leave the Airbnb, like mm -hmm. you never have to ask me, Hey, do you have your key? Hey, do you have your wallet? Hey, do you have your whatever the hell I have an inventory in my pockets yep. where I have certain things in certain pockets yep. that are there every time. And whenever I stand up to leave, I do the pat check. And within a second, I know, Exactly. If I'm ready to go, yep. um, the most recent addition to my pocket inventory is my fold up mask. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my favorite mask because I have masks like in my car and at work and stuff like that, that I prefer to use. But this one is part of my kit because if I don't have that one or I don't have access to it right away, this one is always in my pocket ready for me to use. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, that would be my that would be my go to cheat code for life. What what about you? Um, I just saw this not rec not not too long ago, very recently, and it it's pretty fucking amazing. The earlier you figure out the other people's like the random people's opinions don't matter, the happier you will be. Okay. Like you have certain people whose opinions should matter. Your boss, direct coworkers, your family, and only certain family, not all of them. Yeah, I mean like your lover, your your children. Your children, you know, the people that have a direct influence in your life and that you want to have a direct influence in your life. But if you write off the general populace of the world, and then write off people that are close to you that don't have a positive effect on you, your entire life fucking changes. And you kind you kind of go into social easy mode. Like once you decide that this person is either toxic or 
they don't benefit my life by their presence. Yep. And you write them off and you stop giving a shit what they say and what and and trying to impress them or whatever else. Like your stress level it goes down 90% just off the fucking yeah. bat. Yeah, for sure. Like you can outgrow people and and that's okay. Like sometimes it sucks, sometimes it's sad, but like it can happen, man. Like diverging yeah. paths, you know. And and you shouldn't um, you sh- nobody should be offended if someone's path diverges away from them. I mean, it can be hurtful, but like that's yeah, just be sad, be sad, but don't be angry. I right. Guess. I mean, I right. guess you can't you can't help how you you know emotionally react to a situation, but like yeah. you know have a little bit of empathy. Like uh, that's a tough one, but yeah, I agree with you completely. Yeah. All right, man. My my next one for you is mm-hmm. number fifty six. Oh. First, think of a product. Now, what would be the absolute worst? Actually, hold on. Before I even ask the question, just say say the name of a product. A camera. A camera. Okay. What would be the absolute worst brand name for a camera? Hmm. <laughs> the worst brand name for a camera... Uh, shuttered. <laughs> shuttered. <laughs> That's okay. All right, I can see where where uh, where the uh, the company was going with it. Like I I I see where they were going, but um, but you're not buying expensive glass from a ca- a camera company named Shuttered. <laughs> uh, yeah, no doubt. Hey, speaking of branding, I just got a text message. On my phone, it says, congrats, your winning code printed on your receipt came in second in a Walmart giveaway. Do you think it's a scam? <laughs> it's got a Oh, it's got a, um, a, a link that I'm supposed to click. Yeah, don't click it's, it. Um, it's X7 and um, a series of other alphanumerics yeah. dot info slash another series of alphanumerics. Yeah. I'm sure that's legit. Yeah, no, that's actually the easiest way to hack an iPhone is cl- those links. So don't click it. Um, yeah, okay, so. what about you, man? What, what kind of product are you thinking of here? Um, well, um, let's go with something near and dear. Let's go with beer. What would be the worst name for a beer? Oh, worst name for a beer? Yeah, for a beer um, company. A beer company. A beer company. Like, it would probably. Let's see. Um, Beer companies like to use puns, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to put my head in the pun realm. Um, um, how about barley beer? Because it sounds like barely beer. The, 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 uh, printed that <laughs> makes a lot of that makes a lot of bad sense. Yeah. <laughs> like I feel like it would be an Anheuser Busch move to name a, a line of beers barley beer. That, well, th- that might be a little too close to the vest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like Bad it. Bad Weave says Devil's Jizz. Um, the Squid's mixtape says Piss. Um, yeah, Piss. That, uh, yeah, I think that's a dead giveaway. <laughs> it's not a good product. So I rolled a sixty four, but that's a that's a more of a comment than anything. It's a it's kind of an editorial thing. So I re rolled a number twenty. Twenty is what is the best inside joke you've ever been a part of? Oh my god, man! Um, best hmm. inside joke you've ever been a part of? This is a tough one, dude. Um. Is probably something from like way earlier in my life. Um, either it would either be an inside joke shared with you, or shared with uh, with our mutual friend Chrissy. Chris, it would be one of those. Um, whew. Uh, and it probably involved something mean about someone else. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know that I would even want to reveal it. Uh, do you have something in mind? I do. Of, uh... 
I do. And this is one we just talked about not too long ago. You and I talked about not too long ago. And okay. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna explain it. I'm just going to let you know that you know what it is. Okay, well, which is appropriate because that's how inside jokes work. Right. So you and I will laugh, and everyone else will be like, "I don't get it." And I also have a follow up. Okay. 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 So the so the actual one the 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 narrow scale is go movie night. Yep. Okay. As you were setting this up, that actually popped into my head. Yep. And yeah. Okay. All right. And what's your follow up? You just lost the game. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> and so did Squid. You know, yeah. And also, like, I, 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 I take solace in the fact that you also just lost the game. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. And, uh, so did, and so did Bad Weave. But now I'm sharing that loss. <laughs> so, did, so did everyone else. You all just lost the game. Uh, um, all right. So let's let's just do uh, one or two more of these. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> then one is, so I got 37. So let's see. Let's scroll up here. 37. Um, okay. What would be the worst buy one, get one free sale of all time? Colonoscopies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Uh, I was, my, my brain immediately went to positive COVID-19 test. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, all right. Um, let's go with 56. 56. Number 56 to close it out here. Uh, okay. Oh, we already no, did that one. The, that's the one. Yeah. yeah, yeah one I just, we already did that one. Roll, roll again. Roll yeah, again. Yeah, 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 yeah. What ridiculous and untrue yet slightly plausible theories can you come up with for a cause of a common ailments like headaches or cavities? That was a lot. That was very wordy. Um, what what number, number is it? It's number 61. 61. Okay. <clears throat> Ridiculous and untrue, yet slightly plausible theories for common ailments like headaches or cavities. Um, uh, I, I could say um, uh, the Russians uh, uh, dropped an EMP bomb. Um, that could cause headaches or cavities, I would think. Uh, well, headaches. I don't know about cavities. I'm not sure how that would how would that work. Do you think an EMP could could just like vibrate the uh, the health out of your teeth? Uh, I I don't know if an EMP would. Um, I was gonna go with a um uh. Alien signals directed at our sun are causing fluctuations of gravity within our planetary gravitational uh, 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 area, and that that fluctuation of gravity is what's causing headaches, okay. and could also promote tooth decay because those slight variations in gravity between the teeth causing them to vibrate ever so slightly. Yeah, I can see that. I believe it. I'm gonna I'm gonna post that on Facebook actually. <laughs> see if I can get other people to, yeah. to join me in believing that. Call it G Anon. <laughs> G Anon. <laughs> Did oh, you hear that the, the Q Anon guy outed himself on HBO? Oh, so good. I um, there's there's a little bit of debate about whether that's the sure guy. Sure. But, uh, sure. Eh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually on my watch list as well. The yeah. uh, the QAnon documentary. Yeah. Um, okay, dude, uh, that was fun. Um, tell me about. Um, fr- are we friends? Oh, we're friends. Uh, no. Oh. No, Kent. You and I are family. Aww. So, we're talking about friends, and uh, I I have a way of classifying people, whether they are family, friends, or acquaintances. And it's okay. slightly different for actual like blood family, uh, but that has more to do with tradition in my family versus what I'm about to talk to. And what it is okay. is it comes down to um, trust. So I defined friends in three categories. Uh, you have 
you have acquaintances, you have friends, and you have family. And this all came out because when I was putting f- posting pictures up on my website, anthonylemos.com, I had to, some pictures are good for certain people and not for others. And I had to kind of find a way to, to define and differentiate. And then I realized that I've been doing this like my entire life. I just needed yeah. to f- formulate or for, uh, 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 formalize. actually formalize the, the verbal, like the vocal differences between them, you know, the actual, the terminology. Yeah. And you've been doing this like literally your whole life. Like you've been, been categorizing and classifying everything. Right. Like since I've, since I've known you. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, this, this tracks. Okay. It's, it's it right. started with fucking baseball. All right. It started with baseball. <laughs> Which was my, you see my baseball? Which, which was my longest and most disappointing realization uh, or factualization. Baseball is a sport, and it fucking pisses me off because by my own definition of sport versus game, baseball falls into the sport category. Anyway. That's a, that's a topic for another one. <laughs> I think we've actually discussed that a few times, and it just it still drives me fucking bonkers. Um, now... I, I, I designate people in these three categories. So every, everyone I know is either an acquaintance, a friend, or family, or stranger slash public. If I barely fucking know you or I only know you by name, you're automatically in the, in the public slash stranger profile. That's like the default. But once I know you and I can identify you in a crowd and I can identify your voice, things like that, you, you elevate into one of three categories. Here's the easiest way to define them. If you show up at my door and need a place to stay, how how acclimating am I going to be to you? Am I going to let you crash for a night and you got to go the next day? Are you going to show up unannounced and stay for a couple days and then move on out of here? Or if you show up, no matter what time of day, and you can stay for as long as you need until you get whatever you need out of it, like, what? which category are you? So, Kent, if you showed up my door just randomly, you just fucking knocked on the door and said, I need a place to stay, there wouldn't be questions asked. There would just be, okay, well, I'll grab a fucking pillow and make sure that the sheets in the guest room are clean. You're good for as long as it is as you need. That's yep, family. That's mu- that- that's mutual, by the way. Yeah, but but that's family, you know. That's that's that level, and it's that level of trust. If um, I I hate to to call people out directly, but if someone showed up and like I knew them, but I don't know them that well, and I don't know exactly how much to trust them, and I don't know if they have ulterior motives or anything else but I know them well enough to invite them in. Mm. That's an acquaintance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If, and, and, and this is all based on like, you know, family, if family shows up at the door, I'm not even asking the wife, like you're staying. That's the, the end of story. <laughs> That's just how it is. Right. With, with a friend, I'll invite you in and you, you can crash for a night. Then I'll have to talk to the wife and we'll have to figure it out. But you know, it's a limited time thing, but it's not a big issue with an acquaintance. I definitely have to talk to the wife first. Right. Okay. You know, that's a good, uh, that's a good line. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of how I differentiate those three family. I'll send you pictures of my kids, friends. I'll send you pictures of my kids in public situations, soccer Mm -hmm. games, things like that. Acquaintances. Mm -hmm. I'm not sending you pictures of my kids. My kids might be in a picture with me in it. They just happen to be there, but I'm not sending you pictures of just my kids. Right. Yep. And then public, okay. I don't post public pictures of my kids unless I've already vetted it and thought it through and made sure there's no, no way it could be taken the wrong way. Yeah. Okay. I think it's important to define people in these categories and to know where they lie on that spectrum. And it's not a matter of choosing some people over others. Like I said, it's a matter of trust. It's a matter of comfort. You know, because I'm not just inviting you into my house. I'm inviting you into my house with all of my stuff, my kids. And by the way, if you're family, 
I'm not wearing pants when I walk around the house. I don't fucking wear <laughs> pants when I'm wearing, you know what I mean? So it co- there's bad sides to it as well. Yeah. But I well, think and, and just to clarify, just to reiterate and clarify, when you when you're using family in this context, you're not talking about blood relatives. No. Someone who shares your DNA. Right. It's a different thing. Right. So like DNA sharers um, are also divvied up, uh, I'm assuming, are also divvied up into those same three categories. Right. Right. Um, yeah. And here's the other thing is it the I have to each level like an acquaintance is the base level. It takes a while for, to go from a, a acquaintance to friend. It takes an order of magnitude to go from friend to family. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then yep. time wise, like if I haven't talked to you in a long time, it takes just as long to creep down. Yes. You know? Yes. However, at any given time, because I'm a very untrusting fucking person, at any given time, you can go from from the top of the friend scale to fucking public in a heartbeat. Mm. Like, but that's me and my my trust issues. So that's that's how yeah. it, that's how it it's, is. It, it's easier. It's it's much easier to lose trust than to gain trust. Uh, gaining yes. trust takes time. Losing trust can be one incident. Right. One moment now, can can cause the loss of trust. On on the trust distrust scale, if you start at zero, like if zero is the middle, <laughs> with my wife, she gives you like a twenty point trust factor. Mm, as soon as like she you meets you, yeah. As soon you as she meets you, 20. yeah, yeah. As mm-hmm. soon as she meets you, she's giving you a twenty, letting you do what you what you want with it. As soon as I meet you, you're at like a negative thirty, negative forty, <laughs> like. You exist, therefore you are untrustworthy. <laughs> right, right. Um, yes, but but that's okay. that's me. That's how my personality is. That's you know, there's probably some daddy issues in there. Yeah. But whatever. I'm 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 more like your wife than than like you in yes. that. Um, I don't know if I spot a full twenty, but um, I definitely give people the benefit of the doubt in most cases. I mean, sometimes right. you can, like, upon first glance, you might get uh, you know something about their behavior or whatever might indicate. Uh, you know, yeah. otherwise, but just, um, you know, most casual, um, meetings of people. Yeah. I, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt in most cases. Yeah. So I, I, I probably spot them about, I don't know, I'll spot you a 10 probably. And, and, and it's on it, first meeting. again, this is like a Richter scale of trust, right? Like a, a two is 10 times greater than a one and a three is 10 times greater than a two. Like, you know, it takes, yeah, okay. sure, you know, sure. it's, it's, it's not a linear scale. It's more of a, uh, uh, whatever the fuck you call those, those graduating scale. It's something, yeah. Um, yes. So, my, and the, and the, my point is, with all this is, if, for example, on my on my website anthonylemos dot com, if I don't grant you family access, don't be offended by it. That's like I have very specific criteria for you to be in that family access of it. Mm-hmm. Um, if if I give you. If I don't give you any access, then, you know, just know that maybe I don't know you as well as you think I know you. And if you feel you should be in the the family category and I grant you friend access, you know where you stand. I'm not going to apologize for it. <laughs> right. You know, right, right. logarithmic. Yes. Roz J got it. It's logarithmic scale. Ah, um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's not to be, it's not to take, like, you can take offense to it if you want, because I don't give a fuck, but this is my scale of, of knowledge and trust. And that's just how it is. And that's just, that's how I live my life. So I thought that'd be an interesting, an interesting topic to bring up. Now, how do you, how do you, do you have an equivalence of that? Is that something that, that you've even considered or thought about? Is that, do you have like a, or, or is it just on a per person basis? You're like, yeah, I'll trust this dude with with uh, crashing at the house for a week, but I'm not going to trust him with pictures of my kids or vice versa. Yeah. Like, where well, do you fall on that? And, like, how out of so, line am I with your with your logic? No, you you and I are are not all that different, really, with with the categorization. Uh, other than the fact that you name you name it, you put a name to it, you formalized it, as, right. as we said. Um, to me, my mind pretty much works the same way. Like, yeah, acquaintances. Um, I. I like the way 
who by like the highest tier as family uh, because um, I, I would have said like close friend or something like that. Uh, but family, I think, is more more appropriate to like how how I actually think about people. So there's only a handful of of people throughout my life that have elevated to that status. You, of course, being one of them. Um, Scotty, who um, helped facilitate the uh, Vesflateran 12 acquisition, <laughs> um, he is another one of my my dear friends that I would consider family. I do like I call him brother, you mm -hmm. know, and not not like Hulk Hogan calls everyone brother. I mean, like literally, I like he's my brother. Listen up, brother. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, let me tell you something, brother. Um, but yeah, like uh, I I think I've got basically the same scale dude and like the same it, it, it definitely goes with level of trust right so and and just to to reemphasize or to to go back to something that that we kind of touched on is that um blood relatives are not automatically in the family category mm -mm. Uh, because i've got a lot of family like you know legit like legal family that mm, <laughs> i don't know you show up at my door and announced Right. Mm, and that's where it know. gets really crazy because I have family Let's... that I will I will share well when when they were an appropriate age they're no longer that that uh, an appropriate age for that. But I would share pictures of my kids in the bathtub with them. Would not trust them in my fucking house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's what I was going to say like you, like certain family members like you show up in my front porch like I'm going to come out to the porch to right. have that conversation with you. I might, <laughs> I might, I might buy you a hotel, but you're not coming in. Right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, like, I'll front you like cab fare or, or maybe even a, a, you know, a room for the night or something like that. But it ain't my house. No. You know, uh, no vacancy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then, if, like, if you, you show up with up, a tent, you might be able to crash in the backyard. Maybe. And yeah. And that's maybe, <laughs> you know. Um. But, but I mean, but that's I don't know. I've I've also got a lot of like close family too that you know I, absolutely you show right. up on my porch like come on like we'll figure this out later. Let's um, you know let's get you some food. Let's get you get you a right. pillow and a soft place to lay your head. And uh, and, and a lot know, we'll of times a lot of times it's a matter of what you've been through together. Yes, you know it really it, it's, and that, well that's where the trust comes from a lot. Right, like, because the the experiences that you shared and then how the two of you reacted to those situations and how, you know, cause I mean, a lot of it like childhood, <laughs> I say childhood, like, like when we were teenagers, right. A lot of the trust with our friends. And, and I think some of our initial like trust in each other was when we would get in trouble together. And when I say get in trouble, I mean like do dumb shit, but not get caught. Um, and then the, the fact that neither one of us told anyone else right. about it and neither one of us got in trouble for it like that builds trust yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean um but, but yeah i mean it, it could be all sorts of things it could be um not necessarily that, that you did dumb shit but like um just you know precarious situations um where like let's say that um let's say you did something really embarrassing um you, you fell down and like you split your pants or you pissed your pants because of uh you know, whatever the case, right? Like you got scared in the haunted house and you pissed your pants, you know? And the fact that I didn't go around telling everybody, because that would be a laugh, dude, that would be, yeah. that'd be a riot to go around and tell everybody I would get, you know, I'd be the center of attention for the next day because I've got this great story about Amos, but because I don't tell those stories, then that, that earns trust in your book, you know, and, right. and you know, whatever it is, but like, and, and for the record, I've never, I've things. never pissed my pants in a haunted house. I've thrown up one time, but I've never pissed my pants in a haunted house. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Oh, I know. And I wasn't even drunk. That was, I, I threw up out of, out of terror. Like I was genuinely scared in this haunted house. It was a Myrtle Save beach. It was story. amazing. Save that story because I want, uh, we've already got our, our topic figured out for next week. But in the coming weeks, I want to talk about haunted houses. Like, oh. I want all those stories because I've I've been through a shitload of haunted houses, and I've worked at several haunted houses, and yeah. I've got stories, and I wanna I wanna I wanna dive on on that. There That's, there are definitely some good fucking haunted houses out there. Yes. That yes. going in fully aware of what you're going to what you're going to experience does not prepare you for what you're going to experience. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I'm looking forward to that. And, and sometimes it's just fucking exhibition art, and you're like, ah, well, uh, I'm not, I'm not three. This is not scary. Yeah, 
and those are fun. <laughs> and those are, yeah. Well, but Especially those are if you have little kids. Are. Those are great. They, you know. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll say you, that. Uh, <laughs> you will never look like more of a fucking hero to your kids when you're walking through not giving a shit about anything, and they're frightened as fuck at the haunted house you're walking through. Like, you might as well just be wearing a cape and a big fucking S in your shirt. Like, there's... <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Hey, and Bad Week says we're about a week or so away from halfway to Halloween. Um, that sounds like a good time to talk about yeah. haunted houses. Yeah. So if here, only, here if, in... Um, if only we plan shit like that. Yeah, well, I say, how about two two episodes from now? How about that's our haunted house episode? Sure. Yeah, you remind me. Cool. I need to write that down. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. All right. Um... Yeah, man. Uh, for the, for those listening or watching, let us know if you have categories of people and if you've like formally uh, identify like not identified them but but categorized people and and how how would you react if someone found out they were not in a the category they thought they were in? How would you how would you approach that? Because yeah. I know how I'd approach it, but I'm a cold, heartless piece of shit bastard. So. Yeah, well, and that and that changes over the years, right? Like I used to be super sensitive about what people thought about me and well, and what, the, like it, what it goes back to my I cheat code, <laughs> right? But, like in, in how well, not just what they think about me, but also like what they think my opinion of them is. Right. I used to be really sensitive about that, and I'm these days not so much, man. If if you're a dickhead, like I'm not gonna just go out of my way to tell you you're a dickhead, but if you ask me if you're a dickhead, I'm gonna tell you. Yes. Like, yes, yes, you are a dickhead. Like, I'm not going to feel bad about that. You no. know, you're the one that's a dickhead. <laughs> like, I shouldn't be the one feeling bad. You should feel bad <laughs> for being a dickhead. <laughs> you know? You're the douche, not me. Yep. Um, definitely. That's that's just how that shit goes. So, <laughs> um, dude, next week. Uh, actually, you know what? Hold on. Hold on. I, I feel like traveling to uh, just to, to somewhere in the world, uh, but I'm always concerned. Do I need to bring my umbrella? Should I wear shorts? Do I need a coat? That that those are all good questions. Those are all very very good questions. And if you will stall for two seconds, I will find out if you need to fucking have a coat. Okay, so um, our good friend oh, Mark Jelinek, fuckweather.com. Fuckweather.com. Fuck Mark Jelinek has a podcast called what is it about the weather if you guys have not listened to this this show i encourage you to download an episode they're only like 20 or 30 minutes each and he talks about the weather but usually as a contributing factor to what he's actually talking about um the the show is about how weather affects literally everything else about our lives um it's a great show it's super fun and mark is one of the coolest nicest uh all around awesome dudes uh, that I have met through Ritual Misery podcast. And I'm so glad that he's in our life and in, um, you know, as a part of our RMP family. So please go check out what is it about the weather on all the podcatchers. Is that enough stalling for you, Amos? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going? Where are we going uh, you, you, this week? You, you start it. I'll come in. One word. It's ritual misery. It's one word weather. By Mark Jelinek and his what is it about the weather? All right, uh, we are going to Bangalore in uh, Karnataka uh, region of India. And it's uh, sunny. One city. One city. One forecast. One forecast. One word. It's ritual misery. It's one word weather. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What a fun, what a fun thing. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's springtime in uh, the northern hemisphere. So big surprise. <laughs> Uh, well, it's dark shit. here, so it makes sense that it's, it's yeah. Uh, there's yeah, that. And also, uh, the Weather Channel, uh, weather.com. is is yeah. trash. It's it's got good stuff there, but you gotta. 
fight through all the fucking, all the fucking like the dumb, just all the dumb shit that they have there. Uh, it wouldn't let me uh, look anyway, it up um, because of a uh, ad blocker. And if you if I can't look at your website with an ad blocker, then I don't want to look at your website because I'm a fucking podcaster and a live streamer, and I don't need ads all over my shit when I'm showing off your good work. So. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, well, we'll 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 get a different. We'll we'll use a different. Um, yeah. A, a scaled down. Um, yeah. We'll do something. Anyway, else. that's for that's for next time. Um. So speaking of next time. So next week, we are going to predict the future. Are you ready? Are you are you an oracle? Like, do you do you have an inside track on uh, what's going to happen? I like that this is one, five, and ten years, and like we don't even know if this show's going to last one, five, or ten years. So, well, that's right. So we, I mean, so we can predict those things. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So like, yeah. there's no repercussions here. <laughs> we can't get it wrong. So we are going to predict <laughs> what what is the world going to be like in a year? What is the world going to be like in five years? And what is the world going to be like in ten years? In the categories of Tech, science, socioeconomic, politics, and personal. Like what our yep. what our what we think our our personal lives are going to be like. Not and, only, and, and people can jump in on that at uh, bit.ly slash rmp discord. I do have a question for you though, Kent. When it says personal, yeah. are they are they trying to guess what's going to happen in our life in one five ten years, or in their life for one five? No, 10 in, years? Theirs. Oh, okay. in theirs. In theirs. I'm just so, saying or, well, it might actually, be. You know what? They can interpret it however they want. <laughs> if you join our Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord, go to the general conversation tab, and I put a link to the community version of the spreadsheet. Just go in there, create your own tab, and name it your name. Your It could be your username. It could be your real name. It could be whatever you want. Make something else up if you don't want it to be attached to you. Um, and then just fill out the sheet. Uh, give us your predictions for um, for one year, five year, ten years in those categories, and we will share uh, your predictions as well as our own next week. Yeah, should be fun. It's gonna be a blast, dude. I I, I can't wait to see what you think is um, uh, gonna be happening politically in ten years. <laughs> I think that's going to be fascinating. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Uh, more importantly though, you can find out when our next live show is by following our Twitter at ritual misery, because well, our schedule is kind of just fucked right now. So we will announce on there as soon as we know a definite time, it will be sometime Sunday, but as soon as we know a definite time, we'll put it on there and hopefully you guys can join us then. Yeah, absolutely. If if you want to see what dumb jokes I'm making on the internet lately, um, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter for me. Or if you'd like to look at some new photography that I'm getting ready to post up here shortly, uh, cruise on by anthonylemos.com. You can find all my other links, my TikToks and my thingses and my twits and all that stuff there. Anthonylemos.com. Also head over to ritualmisery.com for everything that we're doing, all of our projects, links to all of our everything. Like, yeah. like pretty much all of our stuff. Ritualmisery.com. Yep. And of course, uh, Kevin Cloud Music. Awesome job. Does good things along with uh, BBJ yep. and Flavor uh, Toothpaste. Uh, yeah, and and, uh, and Stephen Cogswell. Yep, all good things. See you next week. See you guys. It didn't do the thing. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. Um, yeah, Roz J, uh, OnlyFans, uh, coming soon. We, uh, will, uh, we have a patron goal for that. Yeah. Or uh, I don't think we I don't think we made that a patron goal, but it's a patron goal. Yeah. <laughs> Give us, give us enough money, we'll make an OnlyFans so we can make more money. I, th- I thought you. about making an OnlyFans and just having like the most innocuous shit on there. Just to say we have one. Just to get people yeah. to go check it out. Yeah, just like photos and videos of like, I don't know, vacuuming or... Right, uh, yeah. Walking through the grocery store. Like close-ups of my hands while I wash dishes. 
<laughs> Bad Wave makes a note to lower his Patreon <laughs> pledge. <laughs> Maybe that's the maybe that's the problem. Maybe if we fall below a threshold, we start at OnlyFans. Ooh, and that thre- uh, that threshold goes up by like a dollar each month, so that the amount pledged has to keep going up to compensate for that. Otherwise, we'll start a fucking OnlyFans. I think I think Bad News onto something. <laughs> oh my gosh! 